irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to The Inner Voice with Dr. Fujan Zain, only on LA Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Fujan Zain, and welcome to The Inner Voice Show. This show is about making a difference in your life so that you can create a free mind and a heart filled with love toward creating a fulfilling life for yourself and everyone around you. I'll bring you the latest research in the realm of human sciences, and we'll talk to experts in their field to bring you the jewel of their knowledge and wisdom. And today, I'm going to actually talk to you myself, I'm the expert, um, and I'll talk to you about my latest book, Life Reset, The Awareness Integration Path to Creating the Life You Want. Now, when I talk about the Awareness Integration Path, that's the latest psychological model uh, that I created and has been presented in this book, Life Reset, as a series of exercises. I'll tell you a little bit about the model and uh, a little bit about the book. Now, the awareness integration model has been researched and published in many with many groups and in many international um, journals. And the latest research we did was in Cal State Long Beach with students, which resulted in 68% decrease in depression and um, 27% reduction in anxiety and raised their self-esteem. We've done this uh, with many people in the clinical uh, setting as uh, psychotherapy settings, and we found um, close to 73% reducing depression and anxiety and raising um, self-esteem about 43%. We've done this research with divorced groups, and uh, we've created astonishing um, results also. And I'm so excited that we're not only we're bringing it into the clinical world and you know psychotherapy world and people who are in need of that, but now we're taking the model into uh, the educational world, which uh, there's um, uh, we've been doing a research with um, uh, newborns all the way to three-year-olds in Gem Educare, which is the first. Um, place in daycare that is actually taking care of uh, this type of a model with their children and doing the study. And so far, we've seen a lot of emotional intelligence being built and self-esteem being built as the children are being brought into the daycare and as they're growing. And so starting July and August, we're going to have a pilot study in Crete uh, Charter School in South Central LA with 132 students from uh, 0 to 6K and uh, we're going to teach all of their um, teachers the model so they can implement it every day and bring it into the learning um, spectrum versus only on a therapeutic spectrum. So I'm really excited about that and I wanted to share the model with you so that you can also at home start looking at how you feel, how you think, and how you experience the world, how you act, and um, what what type of relationships you create. We all live in relationships. That's what we do. And what part of it we can be um, a designer of those relationships is what we want to be talking today. Um, I have my offer, all of you, or some of you who might be interested in uh, counseling with me or consulting with me or coaching. Um, I have uh, my offices in Irvine, Woodland Hills, and Beverly Hills, and I do a lot of work online, whether it's on with video or audio or uh, chat or email, so you can go to my website, fujan.com, F-O-O-J-A-N.com, and um, look at how to connect with me. Today, also, I'm in the studio, so if you'd like to call me, you can love to hear from you at 818-602-4929. We'll be right back with the latest research. Since 
the model is also about raising self-esteem. I found this latest research that was done February 20th and 2018th uh, that says self-esteem key is key to treating mental health and improving how mental health patients perceive themselves could be critical in treating them, according to a study from the University of Waterloo, recently published in the Journal of the Canadian Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. The study found that youth with psychiatric psychiatric disorders currently receiving inpatient services reported lower self-concept, particularly global self-worth, compared to those receiving outpatient services. This was the first study that examined youth with psychiatric disorders by comparing what type of service they were receiving and whether that was associated with self-concept. Mark Farrow, the Canada Research Chair in Youth Mental Health and an Assistant Professor in the Faculty of Applied Health Sciences at Waterloo, he says, we know that global self-worth is lower in the inpatient group, and we know from other research that lower self-concept is a precursor to other more serious mental health problems. Interventions to improve an individual's self-concept or self-perception would be a complementary to some of the more pressing needs within the child and youth psychiatric services. So when we look at self-concept, when we look at self-esteem, we know that as a child, um, we grew up taking anything that came around us from our parents, uh, especially from our mom or the uh, the one who actually took care of us, and uh, our dad and everyone who was around us, grandparents, family members, siblings, and as we went to school, our peers and teachers. And the way that we took upon us how they looked at us and how they reacted to us, we all form a self-concept about who I am. Am I lovable? Am I special? Am I someone who is, uh, you know, special to other people? Am I bad? Um, Am I not likable? So all of those come as a reflection of how we mirror what's going on around us. If the world around us mirrors us, then we mirror back and then take it personally, very personally as we're a child. Because we're trying to figure out who we are, we're building, we're trying to figure out um, who we are in the world and who the world is to us. So we form relationships, we are in relationships. The first relationship we're in is our environment as we are growing in our mother's womb. That's the first relationship in the world around us. So the world around us tells us, is it comfortable? Is it safe? Uh, Is it dangerous? Is it uncomfortable? Is it anxiety producing? Is there pain around me? Is it suffering around me? Or is it happiness and calmness? And as a child, um, we experience emotions and we make determinations about what's right and what's wrong through the emotions of whether they are um, pleasurable experiences or painful experiences. So we build our character that way and move forward. So the self-concept of as we originate in, um, in the world and we try to figure out who we are is pretty much the story that gets created and we move along and that story becomes our life story and some of it is um, done very automatically so we're aware for possible time and then we put it in our subconscious and we go on so we all grow up with a story in the back and um, we've put it so much in the back and it's so much in the subconscious that it just runs us and uh, we run Uh, our relationships, we live every day based on the stories that we've created and put it. But sometimes we forget that we are the one who created those stories. And um, we forget that we created it, we can shift it, we can be another way with it, we can recreate the story and revisit and reword it. 
And that's where the awareness integration uh, model comes in, to look at each part of the um, relationships that we make and look at those relationships and see how am I thinking, feeling, and operating in this relationship? What do I add to this relationship? How do I even perceive this relationship, whether this relationship is with my mother, father, siblings, people in the world, uh, people who I love, whether they're my mate or my children or my friends, people who I work with, and um, all my comments and uh, belief systems and reactions come from the story that I uh, carefully have put together since childhood. And then someday I wake up and see that maybe life is not running exactly the way I want it. And um, I've been doing this on automatic. And maybe I, if I get a chance to do it all over again. So have you ever wished you could just wake up one day, reach across your nightstand and hit the life reset button? And let's face it, the struggles and frustrations of everyday life leave millions of women and men around the globe yearning for a new way. Awareness integration is the new model in the field of therapy that brings in and synthesizes many of the theories that are there to raise self-esteem, uh, raise self-awareness, and releases the psychological blocks and some of the stories we created from before and heals some emotional wounds from the past so we can be clear, clear the past, and uh, live in the present moment, make decisions and actions and aware of here and now, and build a vision for the future, and then come back from to the present moment to create whatever the future lies ahead of us. Interestingly enough, one of the major differences between human beings and animals is that we have the capacity to be self-aware. We have the ability to watch ourselves, what we think, what we feel, and how we behave. And many times, all three are happening at the same time, and it's important for us to distinguish between our thoughts, our feelings, and behaviors, and look at the impact that we actually have in the way that we think and feel and act on your, on ourselves, upon ourselves, and everyone around us in the world. We're able to self-reflect by asking ourselves questions. Why did I do that? How did it impact me? How did it impact everybody around me? What can I learn from this experience? And if we take it a step further, we can ask ourselves, what thoughts, feelings, or experiences from my past has affected what I do in my day-to-day -day life? How can I begin to let go of them so I can bring my life into an alignment with my best intentions of who I am today and not just the old me. Um, I don't have to make decisions the same way I did at three. I don't have to react the same way I did at five. If I am a grown up and an adult, I can react and think and feel and behave as who I am today as every part of me has learned and experienced in the world and can bring that and integrate it into who I am today and not be separated uh, from my different parts. Yes, we have the great capacity to be self-aware and self-awareness can be a very effective and dynamic tool. Nathaniel Brandon, who is a guru in self-esteem, says living consciously with self-awareness is a source of power and liberation. It doesn't weigh us down, it actually lifts us up. So yet we're not fully tapping into this power. We don't learn from our childhood how to be self-aware and self-actualized and kind of monitor ourselves. Since childhood, we're always using other people and looking at outside and bringing what's outside and inside of us, but we don't learn in how we're doing everything we're doing. Most of the time, we do not use and practice self-awareness with a firm commitment to utilize it and to its optimum. We just don't fully embrace it. That's why we're bringing this now into an education system from early childhood so that we give the tool of self-awareness and self-direction and emotional uh, management from an early childhood place to 
honor our emotions because those are really emotions and feelings are the key to uh, absorbing what's going on out there and seeing it as an information and it's the biggest motivator I had uh, my guest Antonio Damasio who has done a lot of research on emotions and um, you can listen to it on, our, on the podcast on this show LA Talk Radio podcast that I have and um, to go and see how much we our emotions are a key information base for us that tells us that we're off balance and something's working for us and what's not and it becomes part of our path of how to listen to it yet bringing it in through the wisdom and the image and the uh, the thought process that is beside it the one ability we have as species that animals lack we barely acknowledge and we barely practice so what are we missing out on when we don't learn and practice our true self-awareness? It's not just understanding yourself better, though that is a critical first step. The real benefit comes from taking what we see and learn through practicing self-awareness and using it to make healthier, more productive choices in our lives. It's that possibility of imagining ourselves in the future and working toward a more dynamic image or vision. The opportunity that you can create for yourself in your life with becoming observant of yourself and distinguishing between your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors and really observing how, when you think this way, how do you act and how does it um, impact the world, your relationships. If you think negatively, how do you feel and then how do you act negatively and then the result becomes negative and when you shift the thought and emotions into a positive space how do you act and then what are your results those are the pieces that the awareness actually brings for you self-awareness to your thoughts, feelings, and behavior allows you to be more responsible for what you do and what you do not, and only in your own life, but also with life around you. Taking a more responsible approach, you may say, no matter what else happens in my life, I choose to be happy. Or you may choose to be generous, loving, or patient. Those are all the kinds of choices you can make and then act on consciously regardless of circumstances. You might say, I choose to be happy and then get into an accident. This would naturally put a damper on your happiness. However, if you are truly committed to pursuing the intention you stated and to have it as a conscious reality in your life, you can attend to the accident, handle all the natural feelings that arise, such as fear anger, sadness, and so forth, and shift yourself back to happiness. And self-awareness is the key to facilitating the path toward this shift. For example, let's say you reached, um, you reacted to a painful experience from your past by adopting a belief that the world is bad and not to be trusted by clinging to that negative belief. You only see the distrust and the bad behavior in the world that way. You don't get to see the love and generosity because you generalized it. Even if you tell yourself that you're going to trust people more, if you haven't released the trauma associated with your belief that the world is bad, you're not going to succeed. You may trust for two minutes, but something bad may happen and then you'll go right back to how you've always been. So through the self-awareness, however you understand that you're the one creating this belief that the world is bad. It's not that the world is bad, but that you said it's bad. And it's not the world that is unworthy of your trust. It is you creating this belief as a general concept. Then, when you shed light on the past hurt that triggered this belief and consciously release it, you open the door to a self-aware choice. You can confidently proclaim, 
am going to be more trusting no matter how people around me act. And you now have the awareness to live ever closer to that reality. Maybe your heightened self-awareness will lead you to vow that you're not going to live in fear. Again, your intention doesn't mean that fear won't ever come up in your life. Of course it will. Rather, you'll no longer be ruled or guided by your fear. Or you may choose a different way to be in your marriage. You establish the intention that you're going to be a more caring partner and you strive to uphold that intention, even during inevitable periods of strain. Now, these choices that emerge from a positive attitude and the creation of a new reality that you'll gain while following, uh, becoming aware, and then integrating your past within your system, become more powerful and more effective than simple affirmations. An affirmation without a self-awareness to look at your behavior and bring out the blocks that keep you from changing often remains just a fantasy. It's as if you're you're, keep lying to yourself. Your system won't believe it. You'll be happy for a couple minutes, but then your system will override it because it's really not part of who you are. But once you gain greater self-awareness and you work with the blocks that hold you back from being who you are and you want to be, You'll just naturally start making healthier choices. I've never come across anyone who would choose negative intentions or destructive values when given the freedom to access greater choice. I've worked with clients with the model of awareness integration and moved them toward a value system that promotes respect, kindness, love, and personal integrity. Then by continuing to practice their enhanced self-awareness skills. They can consistently look at their behavior and compare it to their intentionality and asking themselves, am I doing what I say I want to do? Am I creating what I want to create? And then you'll discover just how important a deepening sense of self-awareness is in your quest to make meaningful and lasting change in your life. The questions, um, and I'll go through them for you, Um, are designed to facilitate the self-awareness. So we'll look at how you think and feel and behave and the impact of it as you go along. Now, not only that we have those essence of who we are um, and our thoughts and emotions and behaviors toward others, we also relate to others with the guess, I'll call it guess, assumptions that we have about how they think and feel about us and then based on those assumptions we observe their actions and put a meaning into it and we react based on what we think they think about us like imagine if you go into a party or you go to a space and you think that they don't like you if you go one morning to work and you have this assumption that my boss doesn't like me the way that you perceive their behavior the way that you perceive their words um, even their body language is going to be negative because you have made the assumption that obviously they don't like me or they're upset with me so you react to your own perceptions way before you ever do reality check and even do if you do reality check even if you go ahead and ask them how they think of you or feel or what's going on with them so we also have stories about other people and their view of us not only we have our view of them we have our own assumptions and stories about how they view us and it all also stems from how do I view myself So if I think I'm good, even if somebody's upset, I make it to be like, well, obviously it's their problem, not mine, because I know I'm good. And if I have this idea about myself that I'm not good, I'm bad, I'm lazy, I'm no good, I'm a failure, that doesn't matter how much other people around us will give us nice words and, you know, tell us how great we are and praise us, we're just not going to buy it. We're not going to take it in because our own self-concept, what we think of ourselves, how we feel about ourselves kind of trumps it all. So it's so important to have a reality base of thinking and feeling the way you, you really are. And it's okay if you don't like some of the stuff about yourself. 
We're all human. But if you don't know it, if you minimize it, if you deny it, you just push it back and it kind of comes in and takes over and sabotages anyway. And if I don't take responsibility and accountability for even the parts I don't like about myself, then I won't be able to do something to shift it. And if I don't shift it, then I will consistently create problems in my life and in my relationships and then will always be a victim of it. I will always see somebody else has is the issue and I won't be able to do anything about it. So let's go hear Kristen Hoffman and in, in, uh, her music of love and gratitude. And then when we come back, I'll go over the principles of the um, awareness integration model, which is set in life reset book, the awareness integration path to create the life you want.
I'm back. All right. So I wanted to tell you about some of the principles of um, what created awareness integration model. And um, the first one is reality is the experience of the person experiencing it, the observer and the perceiver. Every human being observes and perceives and creates reality based on his or her own state of being, beliefs, emotions, and behaviors. Human beings are a co-creator of reality. Our personal reality is as much a product of emotion as it is of our whole thought and rationality. Our experience will always be a subjective reality, always. We usually create our own version of reality based on distinctions of pleasure versus pain or comfort versus discomfort and then make up complex formulas around our reality. When we insist that our subjective reality is the one and the only one reality that are there, we more easily get into fights and power struggles trying to defend it. And we also get hurt. We don't see that this reality we cling to is just how we perceive the situation, and it's not absolute. We need to look at our personal reality to discover how it got in the way of being in our head, as we also ask ourselves the key question, is this reality actually serving me in my life at this age, at this space, with what's going on around me? Most of people's anguish and suffering is because they form uh, their own version of reality that they insist on, or they form their own version of um, the fantasy that they insist it should be a reality, which it isn't, and they think that everybody else has the different reality than them, which is the truth, they, ha- they do, but they think that they're right. So sticking to a version of a story where you and I call reality and then try to impose it to generalize it in the world gets us into trouble. So um, the understanding, the acknowledgement that my reality is just mine and everybody has their own bubble and they always have their own reality and somehow it's always some sort of a negotiation between ours and sometimes it's a common reality like we all agree this is a radio and I'm talking through a radio and some of you who are listening to the podcast you're we all agree this is called a podcast or a radio and uh, that's an agreement that we have together for that uh, for that reality so that's the first principle now the second one is every human being has the capacity and potential to learn the skills to have an enjoyable functional and a successful life The brain is a living system that is open and dynamic, which means it is forever in the state of change. According to neuropsychiatrist Daniel Siegel, which he will be on my show in a couple of months, and I'm so excited to have him here, who has written many books about how brain functions, it can continue to emerge and reshape itself with the changing environment at the changing state of its own activity. So this brain of ours is plasticity, has always growing, always getting some. So it's not a fixed object, and we're not a fixed object. Our characters are not fixed objects. So we're capable of learning skills, um, of getting our life into a better space. And we're constantly learning new technology out there, um, but there's a piece missing which we don't learn many times about what it is that we need to do in order to create um, less suffering for ourselves and create a fulfilling life. Something holds us back in turning internal process into a comfortable process, not miserable. The third one, these skills that we can learn are learned through physical and psychological development, one's own experiences, mirroring parents, teachers, peers, media, and culture. We learn our skills from our surroundings and then turn them into subconscious patterns of living. In that way, we live on automatic pilot for generations to generation and from generation to generation. 
for example, if we grew up in a family system where yelling and screaming was the norm and saw that behavior as a powerful tool to get the result that we want, there's a pretty good chance we have found ourselves in adult living situations where much of the communication was conducted through yelling and screaming. However, if we if we felt powerless in that surrounding and experienced it more as a painful and anxiety producing environment, we avoid it all at all costs and try to create conflict free interactions. Each of those decisions, whether it is an attachment to a certain behavior or an aversion toward a behavior, limits our way of being. Although so often we don't even know where we picked up those patterns because we picked them up in childhood, we stored them. They're simply what we know as the normal way of being and behaving since they're all around us and appear to be the norm. And most of the time I've heard with people say, that's just who I am. That's me. Well, it isn't. You are constantly growing. You don't have to be fixated in something that's not working for you. The next principle is the human mind perceives and creates meaning internally for all external stimuli that result in a subjective reality that may vary from actual events and realities of others. So, um, People do whatever they do, things happen outside, and we consistently give it some sort of a meaning based on the story that we have inside of us. And we believe that the stories we come up with are really um, the reality that are there. So through the invented reality that we invented, we create formulas, beliefs, personal identities that relate to us and others and the universe at large. In other words, out of all the experiences that we acquire from the world around us as a child, we create assumptions and beliefs about the world and ourselves. Over time, those assumptions and beliefs get reinforced by similar experiences and turn into automatic thought patterns. So Henry Stapp, he explains, a person tends to experience what he or she is looking for provided the potentiality for that experience is present. In that way, our subjective awareness is not challenged. So we only look pretty much for the things we know and we keep bringing back, saying to ourselves, see, that's exactly what I know. So we look at the world through a filter. We simply develop a set of formulas and rules consciously at one point in life to create certain identities to survive life and then live based on those sets of rules that were created at a very young age every day, subconsciously. We create one way of being and behaving at home with our parents or siblings and other ways of being with other people, extended family, teachers, school, friends, lovers, bosses, employees and co-workers or society at large. And funny enough, doesn't matter how old you are, when you go back home for Thanksgiving or Christmas or any of the holidays, we become that five-year-old again. It doesn't matter if we knew exactly how to talk at our work. We go back to family, we become that five-year-old. That subconscious just takes us right back. When we're not aware, we just fall into those roles. The fifth one is human beings store experiences cognitively, emotionally, somatically, and the unintegrated experiences waits to be integrated. Their negative core beliefs, including emotions that are produced by them and the area of body experiencing them, and they get caught, they get stuck, they become and they resurface as an automatic thinking. These negative core beliefs, such as like, you know, I'm not lovable, I'm not good, um, I'm a bad girl. Um, any of the beliefs that are becomes part of who you really, really are is what I'm calling negative core belief. Um, they create a withholding and a survival-based attitude. So you're always reacting from that space. This attitude is triggered by some event and creates a result that prohibits the individual from achieving and holds back one's ability to live a fulfilled life. 
because you're constantly reacting to something from the past and not really seeing what the reality in front of you is. So when you experience an event that produces a negative emotion and is traumatizing and one does not handle and feel and release and reintegrate that part of you back, the produced emotion appropriately, a certain generalized negative belief about yourself and others gets created as a protective measure. So if I say that the world is um, harmful or not a safe place, then as a protective measure, I would say I have to keep everybody away. I have to be hyper vigilant. I cannot trust people. And that becomes a, a complete story that you will run with all your life without necessarily looking at some people might be trustworthy some people might be safe and if you act that way based on that trauma which was when you were young then you will probably also produce uh, behaviors from others which would prove to you yeah the world is dangerous because if you keep don't trusting people and become hyper vigilant and show them anger and distrust they probably won't trust you and they will move back and then you will say see I was right so as a result we approach much of life with an automatic outdated or unworkable attitude so if we don't uncover and transform these negative core beliefs we're prone to living in a constant state of surviving we're simply not flourishing we may be held back in our work and our relationships or in a realm of life, in a particular realm of life, which is probably depressed state or miserable state. Things may be going along just fine. And then boom, someone says or does something that triggers a childhood memory. And we immediately tumble back into the negative crippling belief system. The sixth principle, as the unintegrated belief emotion body state is attended to, released and integrated into the whole system, neutral and positive attitudes and beliefs and emotions can be experienced. When we suffered a painful experience in childhood, we often get overwhelmed. In response, we shut down. Our emotion and turn into survival skills just to preserve. That's often a necessary and healthy response when we're children, and yet those emotions that we were unable to handle back, uh, back then cry out for our attention today. As adults and enhanced self-awareness, we have the opportunity and skill to go back and look at those painful emotions from the lens of who we are today. When we do that and release it and store the undealt um, with emotion, undealt with emotion and that have been blocked in our way, we shine a light on the path that leads to the creation of a new way of being. I only have three more to tell you. So the seventh principle is through self-awareness, integration of one's experience in the creation of conscious choice regarding beliefs, emotions, and actions, you can choose a positive attitude for a creation of a new positive reality and therefore produce intended results. So if you were hurt in, as a child, you were traumatized, something would happen in the child where the hurt, the feeling, all of that is there. And no matter, sometimes when you split off and be successful, rich, gain everything you want, bring life to where it is, that part of you, if it's not attended to, taken care of, will always be there seeking for you to take that um, attention toward it. But when you become aware, when you go to that place and heal it, um, and get it out of your system by acknowledging it and healing it and changing the meaning that the child at that moment gave it and look at it from the strength of who you are today and that you survived that trauma, then the system becomes positive. As we complete with the unfinished emotional baggage from the past and integrate all of our unattended emotional parts, we have more accessibility to our subconscious needs, desires, and wants. Now, we can make conscious choices about the way we choose to think, feel, and behave toward people and matters in front of us versus reacting to it from an old, unworkable, and outdated belief and skills. When healing takes place, inevitably, we choose a healthy and a positive attitude toward growth. From this new conscious, healthy, and positive attitude, we can create a vision about the future and set goals 
and choose behaviors that lead us to create the results we actually intend. Eighth principle is new skills can be learned and practiced in a neutral and a positive environment to enhance life's capabilities, experiences, results, and relationships. All research shows that children learn new information and skills much more effectively in a calm and a positive environment. I've noticed very much when I just teach skills to people who come and see me but haven't worked through all the blocks that they had, no matter how much skills they've learned, when it comes to the possible issue that their emotions are heightened, all of the new skill has gone away and their emotional reactivity shows up. I'm sure you've experienced that. That's why it's important to side by side as you're learning new skills to complete the past so that you can be clear and you learn the skills from a new place, from a new positive space so that they can be a part of you forever. And cotton, the ninth one is conscious intentionality and envisioning of a desired result in combination with effective planning and timely scheduled action plans, raise the probability of achieving the desired results in all of your areas of your life. This is where fantasy becomes tangible reality. Ideas are abstract and in our imagination only when the idea is put into a schedule with tangible action is the desired result created. And that's how we look at the present moment, we go and clean up the past, we come back to the present, we envision who we intend to be. If I look at my thoughts and check to see what thoughts are outdated, what thoughts are um, working for me, what kind of thoughts do I need to have in order to be fulfilled and successful and happy and um, a great citizen of the world and be great in relationships? What type of emotions work for me? If I'm always angry and always scared and always sad and always shameful, does that work for me? Or can I see where those emotions coming from, clean them up, see what it is and and shift and shift into emotions that are promoting and happy and moving me forward and uh, create fulfillment for me to look at what behaviors, what actions am I utilizing, doing in different areas of my life at work, um, you know, about money, about sexuality, about my mate, with my children, with my parents, with people who are around me. How do I act? What part of it is just not workable and I need to change it and I need new skills and what behaviors should I take on as um, a committed person who wants to Uh, live a better life. For all of that, I also need a vision. Who do I intend to be? What type of life do I intend to live? What kind of um, career I want to have? What kind of quality of relationship I want to have? And when I envision that, then I envision who am I in it? Because I can't control the world, but I can see who am I in it. And then they can choose the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors um, that would impact and create the type of relationships that I want. That is how I can co-create life, be someone who is not just the victim of all that happens, but that stuff happens. People are people. They're going to react the way they're going to react. And that's the way I can be assertive and um, be in control and manage myself into creating what I want. So those are the areas to look at in um, the awareness integration model. Now, all of this as an exercise has been uh, set up in the Life Reset book, the awareness integration path to create the life that you want. And you can get that in Amazon or you can go to fushan.com, F-O-O-J-A-N.com and um, get that. Um, From there on, it goes into every single area of your life, your relationships with people, with acquaintances, with family members, with siblings, with work, with money, wealth, um, and uh, your relationship with your children, with your mother, father, significant others, your relationship with you, with maybe you have illnesses, maybe you have addiction, um, with God, with uh, death, with nature, with universe. And you go through all of these relationships and becoming more aware and cleaning up who you are in all of that, where the past is cleaned up, part of who you are today, and you can take on um, 
the beautiful you as a whole person and move forward. I hope that this has helped. And if you have any questions, go to my website, um, send me an email, send me a chat. I love to hear from you. And um, if you read the book, Life Reset, and I hope you do, again, write me an email and tell me your experience with that. It's been great being with you. Until next week, create an amazing life for yourself and everyone around you. You're listening to The Inner Voice with Dr. Fujran Zain, only on LA Talk Radio, 103.7.